Friday, everybody. I can't believe it's Friday already. Like, honestly, I thought today was Wednesday or Thursday until I called one of the courthouses and they were like, so you need an appointment for Friday? And I'm like, no, that's too far in advance. They're like, uh, that's tomorrow. So I figured it out. So in conjunction with the last message um, that we talked about with the whole decluttering, Still, this is along the same lines of decluttering is the topic of burning bridges. So this is something as I'm working on this project of decluttering, it became so crystal clear to me that a lot of the reasons that we have clutter is because we don't want to burn bridges. Now that's a very, you know, common phrase. Nope you know, don't burn your bridges, but is that really what the Bible wants? Is that really what God wants from us? I noticed in trying to, let's just say, for example, clean out my closet and get rid of clothes. What do I do? I take something and I look at it and I'm like, you know, the rule of thumb is you're supposed to, if you haven't worn it like in the last year or whatever, you're supposed to get rid of it. Okay, well, I pull something out of my closet, and I look at it, and I go, um, I haven't worn that, but now that I see it, I think I will. Or, what if I have to do this or go here? I might need this. I know I haven't needed it, but I might need it. Um, I pulled it out to put it on. I don't really like the way it looks, but, you know, maybe if I lose weight or gain weight or change my hair color or do this, it might look good on me. I might want to hold on to it. So we keep holding on to things and we keep he holding on to things, even though we don't need them, even though um, you put it on and it doesn't even look good on you, you still hold on to it in case you need it for something. I mean, I go as far as to think, what if the kids need to dress up for a project and they need some of my old clothes for that? <laughs> I mean, I can, in my brain, I can come up with so many legitimate reasons to hold on to the past, to hold on to things that don't even look good on me. I can rationalize it in my brain. I don't want to burn that bridge. What is the meaning, burn a bridge? What, is, what does that signify? Burning a bridge signifies you can't go back that way. Once you burn the bridge, there's no turning back. You know, people use this in society to describe friendships and relationships. We're so careful. We don't want to burn any bridges because we might need somebody. You know, I know those people are pretty low, but I don't want to burn that bridge because what if I need somebody to bury the body one day? You know, those are the guys I'm going to go to. You know, I mean, we do that with people. We realize that somebody doesn't look good on us. It doesn't benefit us. It doesn't help us look better or feel better. You know, I put some of those clothes on and they're too tight here or there. And it kind of makes me feel bad about myself because it makes me feel like I may have gained weight or I'm not shaped right anymore. It just doesn't look good. I'm getting older, you know. Same thing with people. We try them on, they don't look good on us. They're not helping our self-esteem. They're not helping us better our lives. They're not helping our cause. But we hold on to them because we don't want to burn that bridge, just in case. But, you might find it interesting to know that that is the opposite of what God wants us to do. He wants us to burn the bridges. He doesn't want us to go back into those things. He doesn't want us to hang on to the things that don't make us look good, that don't benefit us. Um, hoarders. Why are people hoarders? Because they hold on to things they don't need. And what happens? They end up with so much clutter that they can't see straight. They end up with so much clutter that it becomes unhealthy. 
Have you ever watched that show, Hoarders, where they go in and people's houses are full of mold and bacteria and disgusting things because they have hoarded so much that they can't even properly clean their homes. They can't even get to the things that they need. They don't even know what's there that they need because they are holding on to all these things from the past. They're not moving forward. They're stuck. Uh, in 1 Kings 18, 21, um, Elijah is talking and he says, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. And he was talking to them because they were going back and forth between uh, worshiping the idol Baal and worshiping God. And he's saying, make a choice and get rid of that. Move forward. Don't hold on to that. In Philippians 3, 13 through 14, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the price, the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So once again, let go of the past. Don't even look at what's behind you. You know the saying, you know, you can't, See where you're going if you're always looking behind. You know, if you're always, if you're trying to drive and the only thing you're looking at is that rear view mirror, can you see where you're going? No, because where are your eyes focused? Your eyes are focused on the rear view mirror and they need to be focused on what's in front of you. You can't move forward if you're hanging on to the past. We've got to burn those bridges because we burn them so that we won't cross them again. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So again, when we are in Christ Jesus, we're a new person. We don't need those things. We can burn that bridge because we don't need it anymore. We're not going to go back that direction and we can burn it with no fear because all things are new. We're new. We're new in Christ and we're going to experience new things. Hanging on to the old, it clutters us. In Genesis 19 and 17, and this might be one of the all-time greatest <laughs> examples of why you don't need to uh, hang on to things. It says, uh, Genesis 19, 17, flee for your lives. Don't look back. But then in verse 26, what happens? Lot's wife looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. So when God says move forward, don't turn around and don't look back. You need to pay attention to that. Um, Lot's wife just wanted one last look. God was destroying the city where they lived because it was full of evil. But Lot begged, don't, you know, don't, don't destroy everything. God said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you a chance to move forward. But don't look back at where you come from. Now Lot moved on forward, but his wife decided she wanted one last little look at what was behind her. And boom. So, you see, when we repent and accept Christ as our Savior, we're not to look back. We're supposed to burn those bridges. We're not supposed to hang on to them. We cast away the old, and we accept the new of what God has in store for us. When you're trying to leave one foot in the past and put one foot in the future, you're stuck in limbo. The prayer that we should pray in Psalms 51.10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. If we create a new heart and a new spirit, we don't need those things. We're not worried about what's over there on the other side of that bridge. So instead of cluttering and hanging on to things, let's burn those bridges and let's go forward. And that's our thought for today.